What's up, friends of the good mood? This is Manny, and welcome to this video log right here. Have you ever wondered how it's like to be at Pixonic headquarters in Moscow? Well, look no further, friends, because that's exactly what you're gonna get in this video right here, along with a whole studio tour that I had when I was at Pixonic with Adrian together. We were walking around, filming everything, and having a look, a detailed look at the different, you know, workplaces on Pixonic. And if you want to see and hear more about it, including the, uh, some of the suggestions I brought in in my presentation then stay tuned for this video and also after what I'm gonna show you here I'm gonna go, go back to this gameplay right, right here with you guys and I'm gonna explain a few more additional thoughts and feel, uh, things, okay? So, sit down, lean back, lean back. <laughs> Hey Adrian, how are you? <laughs> Yo, let's get it, have a look at Pixonic, huh? <laughs> so community angels here, first of all Hey, hey, and we have Stan! A familiar face, huh? Hey, hey! <laughs> Alright, so uh, let's have a look. Which direction? Um, well, let's start from the community zone. Okay. Global community. If we take a look at this, look at all these working people. And this is just one part of it, one very small part. This is where all the support happens. Huh? Oh, look who it is! Oh no, he's hiding. <laughs> oh, you, you, you can't be shy. You've been in the live stream too, and you've done a great job at playing. Uh, nice <laughs> and look at that nice London telephone pole cell right there. Actually, we use it to call someone when we have. So that don't get distracted by the noise. Just so there's an actually working tel no, this is just for you going no, no, inside. No, no, just you, you can go inside. Okay, and then it's quiet. It's quiet and it's steam in the pot inside, like steam in the pot. Oh yeah, he's locked in now. He's going to travel back inside. Oh yeah, that's this is what we have one conference. It's empty, right? There's no one inside, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's a rare thing. Usually, almost all the conference rooms are busy. Yeah. yeah. And what nice rooms those are. I think there's like five or six of them, right? Or four? Yeah, yeah but also on this floor. Yeah, and all of them has a gigantic TV and like a board to draw stuff. Nice. And this is our, our home here for these two days, it, right? The safe zone, the safe zone yeah. With, progress. with all the food. All the goodness and something to drink and something to make music with, right? <laughs> Already been using it a little bit. And great thing is also the view outside. Moscow. Russish, Russian New York. <laughs> there was a guy working out there. What? Where? Where is it? I don't see it. Just. Uh, you see the road? Oh yeah, the road. Oh, you're right. What is that? Some kind of gymnastics, I guess. Ah, oh, it's a skater. It's insane how many PCs there are. Imagine that's like. I'm sure this building has like, with all the personal laptops, probably like two or three hundred PCs. Pretty, pretty sure. And this is where the conference was, right, Stan? Yeah, that's right. That's how we shut out. So usually we have some lectures or conferences here. Uh huh. And this is where um, Adrian and I had a presentation too with feedback. We're standing right there on that pole. And this is where it's all filled with Pixonic people. <laughs> this, yeah, this is the gaming zone. We've got some tabletop games here. Uh -huh. Just practice. Wow. Nice. Oh. There's another one also over there. These pictures are so cool. I need to hang some some of those out in my living room. Oh, he's right here! What a coincidence! Great job! <laughs> yeah, cool. Also, no, that oh, yeah, he made this one, right? This this is from him. Wow, the the stalker, and this the the videos was from someone else. Uh huh. Yep, maybe. You're right. Let's check it out. <laughs> the girls are going away. <laughs> hey. 
This is where all the coffee is being. This comes from. It. Oh it's yeah. I, there's probably like a 500 liters a day. Or also, I don't know. The numbers. <laughs> but very modern and nice looking place. Oh, you're back. <laughs> So yeah, that was basically the whole studio tour that we had when we were there and uh, including the fun pictures that we've made with these weapons and all. And I want to speak about these weapons that you have seen, right? Uh, these wooden, they were made of wood uh, and they were really, they were even a little bit heavy so they were not like uh, plastic and super light you really felt like you were having something in your hand and when I had these weapons I immediately felt like a huge walking war robots there that was so funny man <laughs> and that's how these pictures were created and it's like nice with a green screen in the back you can make some nice uh, thumbnails out of those in the future but yeah so this is one really interesting part and also that dev stream the youtuber versus developer stream right you may be interested to hear that um, uh, Adrian and uh, no, uh, Stan and I, we were in the recording studio on a whole different level on the building, right? We were on a whole different, um, uh, what's it called, uh, 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 floor, on a whole different floor uh, than, than those were actually playing, right? <laughs> that was really cool. And we had uh, this, uh, by the way, I'm getting suppressed now by the Blitz robot here, so I cannot do damage, yeah? And now my suppression wears off, an invader jumps in and suppresses me again, boom. And I'm like, come on, man, let me do some damage, ultimate warrior. Let me test, put your name to the test, dude. <laughs> oh, man, all right, so, uh, yeah, that was, that was nice. The intro, they have a nice studio there. The equipment they have on that recording studio, man, I have a cool studio here, right? But, hey, they have so much good stuff there, I could really just pack a whole stock, a bunch of stuff with me and just, you know, upgrade my studio big time with their stuff they have, man. Good studio and uh, good stuff they have there and all these PCs. For example, right, when you when you enter the building, you may... <laughs> it's interesting, they have like a... This is a large building in the middle of Moscow, pretty much, and... Um, and and there's there, the first thing you see when you come in is like there's security sitting like on the desks in front of you You just you can't enter you need like a visitor card or you need to be working there and having a card uh, And v permission pretty much to enter and that's only when the security will let you pass right so that's also really interesting to know uh, About this building and they have uh, they have there's a many floors in the building um, but uh, five floors, I was told, belong to Pixonic, right? Uh, although I think only two of them are really fully used right now. Um, and uh, they are uh, with a recording studio in one floor and, and a lot of working places there and workstations and people working. And then on the other store, uh, other floor was the one that you've seen in the... Um, in the, in the uh, video footage that I've shown you in this video, uh, where we have started in front of the elevators, right? So I locked down the Ares right here, and now I can walk back into safety and not get hit by his retribution ability. That's good. And then I can come out again and just destroy him. That's usually how I play against Ares. Um, I just try to lock them down before they enter their shield mode. And if it works, then they are, they're sitting ducks. They have their shield active. And they won't get anywhere right there, and that's pretty cool. That means they they can't, you know, they they have to activate the shield if they don't want to get corner shooted by me the whole time. So uh, that usually works really well. Um, but yeah, what else is there to say uh, about my presentation? Also, a few suggestions maybe that you want to know. Uh, in case you want to he uh, hear a little bit about what I suggested, basically, uh, the match now ends. anyways, here this. Fenrir had no chance. We were two on one him, first off. And secondly, he had Redeemer and Tarans. That's nowhere near the amount of damage output that I have here on um, on my Fenrir with two Coronas and Avenger. Uh, so it was an easy kill. But, uh, yo, about the presentation, let me just jump somewhere in the video here uh, to a different place, maybe. Hold on, we can jump. Here, there's a... Yeah, that's that sounds pretty... Hold on, maybe... Yep. Let me, let's just continue from here, and I'm just gonna give you a few ideas here um, about the suggestion. I'm not gonna give every single suggestion I gave, because there was like t 
15 or 20 points in my presentation that I suggested. A lot of feedback coming from you, by the way, guys, from you viewers, right, that I've gathered from the video descriptions and, uh, no, from the, from the video comments that you have written over the time before I went to Moscow. So there's a huge amount of info and, and, um, and feedback from you directly that I've given, including some price stuff and, and, and balancing. And, but there was also some some additional thoughts. For example, you remember maybe that on Yamantau they they once tested on the test server this um, uh, the, the the beacon spawns uh, the, the the spawn positions uh, to have them uh, sideways and not in the front how they are right now, but uh, completely different. And that in in my opinion made the map so much more dynamic and more more fun because every match would now look different, right? It would all look different completely, and the matches would would all develop in a different way and more different places places where fighting happens and all that. And I really like that and I brought it back as a suggestion uh, to not forget about this, that they tested this once as I really like this test, right? And uh, one more thing, for example, that I've brought in as an idea, and I really like, hear, like to hear what you guys think about this suggestion, is a last stand marker, uh, like this. You see right here, this invader, he has last stand, basically, and this would tell me, and my suggestion is to always have the last stand moment displayed to you when you look at the enemy like it is right here this way it would still be just as dominant and strong right i don't think they're i'm not sure if they're changing anything i don't think they are but um it is very dominant right uh, but this little marker would help you to a know that uh, the enemy has last stand that's already a big problem that you don't know that you can send four vortex 200,000 damage at the enemy and you do only 5,000 damage because that's when tr last stand triggers right so that's a really frustrating thing, I believe. And uh, and also, um, so it would A, help you to know that there is last stand on the enemy, and B, it would tell you exactly when the last stand will trigger, right? And uh, after I killed this enemy, I show you again here. Hold on, we're shooting this guy, and now, boop, here. It would tell me exactly when the last stand triggers. So it would, uh, it would allow the last stand to stay as it is exactly, but it, it would help, it give me, as a, someone who's fighting the last stand player, maybe without last stand, it would give me a fighting chance, because then I know how to plan it in, right? I still need to somehow survive these 4.5 seconds or so, which, in my opinion, I also said was too long. 4.5 seconds is, uh, is really long for last stand. Uh, that was just also one of my feedbacks. Uh, but it would help me, uh, I still had to survive it, but at least it would give me a fighting chance to know, aha! Uh, this guy has it and this is when I need to look for a different target in the meantime or just get myself in safety or something, right? You have a little bit of a fighting chance against the last stand player and that's why I suggested this marker to be shown all the time. And I would really like to hear what you guys think about this suggestion and also um, uh, some others that I've just mentioned here. Um, yeah, so uh, also one more suggestion I can share with you that I have sent in yesterday. Not during the visit, I sent this in as a separate feedback on Discord, um, where I said, hey, uh, you remember the Aokin um, Pixonic? It's a robot that people don't really play as much. They, I don't think most people want to play the Aokin because you fly up, right? You have no resistance and no stealth, so no protection abilities at all. And then you fly relatively slow. You can be locked down, you can be instantly killed by, by weapons and, and pretty much, yo. Uh, flying up is pretty much a punishment. You just get picked out of the air uh, uh, and, and taken out, right? And I think uh, people are not really very, that, that playing the uh, Aokin as much as, it could, as, as they could if they made the ability a little bit more interesting. Remember the Aochun and the Aoguang. They can fly, they have a built-in weapon, and they have stealth or resistance three attributes in the ability. The Aokin, however, can fly, has a built-in weapon, and that's it. The third, the third one is missing, right? And I think that's maybe what makes the Aokin a little bit less attractive. And, uh, and my suggestion basically would be to give the Aokin an always um, active, uh, when it's flying, a built-in quantum radar, for example, so that you, okay, you are now in the air and you can be targeted by anyone, but you can also target anyone, right? Uh, that would make the Aokin a lot more interesting because you can carry out your attack maneuvers all the time against whoever you want to attack. A flying Aochun, you can fly up and you can start fighting the Aochun in your flight. Because in the flight you will have Quantum Radar also built in, right? That would be a really interesting uh, thing. And I think this would make the Aokin an interesting robot that I would probably run a little bit more often. 
I tried to get over the gap, I still fell in the canyon. Damn it. Um, or an alternative suggestion also was to, uh, instead of Quantum Raider, give it a lockdown um, as resistance. You cannot be locked down or suppressed while you're flying in the air, right? That would also make the Aoken an interesting machine. You can know, you can always fly freely and you know you cannot be locked down in the air while you are flying. So this way the Aoken had its third ability that would actually help the Aoken be seen a little bit more on the battlefield and maybe be more attractive so that people will actually use the Aoken, right? And um, yeah, so this is uh, one of the stuff that I wanted to show you uh, or, or explain to you. One of the a few few of these suggestions that I've uh, that I've come up with. I think even la the the lockdown resistance and the uh, quantum raider they could even be both on the Elkin. It wouldn't be an overpowered robot because of this. It would just it would just be an interesting robot, right? Uh, so that people would start to r maybe run it a little bit more. Yeah, but uh, what do you think about these suggestions? Uh, let me know about every single one of them and also comment on the studio tour and stuff uh, that Adrian and I had. It was quite a bit of a work to cut this video together, but I hope like it, it was worth it and you guys enjoyed watching it. And if so, then um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment down below. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe as brutal as a man can hit for more. Thanks for bearing with you. You guys are awesome. As always, Money Gaming signing off. Demon voice. <laughs>